Attention wrestling fans, you're in the blast zone for the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb, and you're about to get blown up. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to the <laughs> Buckle Bomb. You are in the blast zone with the one and only Buck Bomber. And today we're ducking and covering with Michael Arrow. Get down! Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. Yeah, yeah or that. Yeah. You've, get, get out. You've already broken every rule of the Buckle Bomb. Hi, I'm Michael Arrow. Thank you. And Ziggy Winston. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, was I too loud now, too? Oh, yeah. Why well, always project? You should be ready for that. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> I'm always mad at you. Be as loud as you want. I hate you, Michael Arrow. That's why you're on for the third time. I am a explosive expert by now, yes. <laughs> I like it. Um, so, guys, how's wrestling been? I'll take over the show. Wrestling is fantastic. We and Ziggy have been going all over the place. Uh, I haven't really been anywhere with you uh, recently, Greenback, so that kind of breaks my heart just a little bit. We used to have nice trips to Laredo. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Buck Bomber, actually. Uh, Buck, Buck, uh, whoever you may or may not be, we may or may not have had great road trips together, but unfortunately that hasn't been recent, so I have been on the road with Sir Ziggy. Actually, Ziggy and I have been on the road quite a bit lately. We've been going to Houston a lot together, going to uh, Mexico and uh, all around Texas as well. So wrestling has been pretty great. I feel great with the matches I've had lately. I had a great match with Warsaw here a few weeks ago. Good one with uh, the Sergeant Anderson, which will not be the last time you'll see us together. How about you, Ziggy? How's wrestling going for you? Wrestling has been quite an experience. Like you said, going to Mexico, going back and forth to Houston and San Antonio. Um Oh, and I'm a two-time tag team champion now. I had to take it away from Wentworth and uh, the little Hendrix boy. The little Hendrix boy. Yeah, little Hendrix boy. Yeah. Yo, I also want to give a shout-out to uh, Mr. Chen. I, I, I can't remember his other name. Him and uh, Mr. Uh, Houston Hendrix had an excellent match here this past Saturday. I think it, it was, was uh, easily the loudest match of the night. It was it was phenomenal. I mean, I I did message uh, Houston afterwards. I was like, hey man, like it feels like just yesterday you were having your debut match, and now you're carrying a beginner through he is their first match. Sixteen. He is a little beast. I think he's seventeen now. Man, it's been like a year. Either way, in ten years experience, he's going to be my age. So I'm so jealous. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's got he's got some kind of future. Some kind of future. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. But it's great. It's great to see the talent that we have at our school and see uh, what else is out there in Texas. Um, shout out to uh, Roscoe, who was also here um, this past Saturday. But I've been running him, running into him in Laredo and Houston and San Antonio and seeing. A bunch of other uh, great wrestlers that are killing it, stepping up to new levels, even getting in there with names. It's uh, I love to see it. All right, all right, all right. So we're talking about the highs. How about – that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, oh <laughs> that's if why you you're If you want to get to the lows, brother, okay. Okay. <laughs> can get to the lows too. Okay, well, I thought <laughs> this episode we could talk about matches we've had and let's start with the worst ones we've ever been in and, and what you do to come back from that you know because you get to a real low point and then i thought we'd end positively talking about you know our best matches so uh does anybody want to start or should i i um it's it's really hard for me to think of like like bad matches that i've had and i i a few definitely comes to mind and i'm not going to throw names out there because yeah yeah let's not it's, let's it's not, not throw it's names. not like that you know it's it's a match is it takes two to tango. I hate to use that phrase. Absolutely. Yeah. So I hate it when someone just ah, oh, you know, the other guy. You know, it's it's just as much as it is on you as it is on him. So it it is really good to reflect on it, but you know, you got to keep your head on straight. But um, I was when when I was first like trying to figure out how to put matches together here at AAPW, I had one um match with this former student unfortunately he didn't really stick around much longer after this which also kind of makes me <laughs> think that oh maybe this match did it but at the same time you know if he really wanted it he'd still be here anyway 
We oh, had a match. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, and it wasn't like the moves that we did were fundamentally sound. It was just like too much dead air. Like we were in the match and we were like, wait, what are we doing? We don't know what to do. It was like we didn't have enough. Um, it's like you're a stand-up guy and you go up there and you forget all your jokes. It's like we are we didn't know what to do. We didn't have a plan. We didn't have a story or anything. So we are just trading side headlock takeovers while you can hear a freaking pen drop. So that um, when the audience is not engaged and you just hear complete silence, mm-hmm. that's the biggest, biggest, biggest like poo-poo my pants moment <laughs> where I, you need to change something. And uh, it does take experiences like that to – to understand and um, to know, like, hey, in the future, you know, have some spots in your pocket. And now if I feel like we're, we're tanking, screw the plan, we're doing the spot. And hopefully you get a reaction. you got to keep – you don't repeat what you were previously doing because I believe that's a definition of insanity. Right. So change it up and do whatever gets a reaction. It might be gaga. It might be funny. It might just be lighting somebody up. Don't shoot on anybody, but you got to bring someone to – you got to find a way to bring him in. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, as far as bad matches go, um, I remember it was December, I think, uh, two years ago now. It was a uh, tag team match, which um, I have a terrible track record with tag matches. Um, and it was, a, it was a big thing. It was a big thing that we uh, we, we built up to. It was, it was big. It was the last match of the year at AAPW. And I said, okay, here we go. And um, it it just kind of kind of started falling apart. Um, I remember there was a there was a spot where um, and like it hadn't been going good already, but there was a spot, and then things were finally getting over. You know, we were having this you know back and forth, back and forth. You know, and then there was a part where we were both going for like a double eye poke, and then we were gonna feed around, and then double headbutt, double down. You know. Good times, good times. Because people were getting into it. They were like, oh, they, they're, they're, they're just, you know, mirroring each other and just smacking each other with the same thing. This is great. And it's funny. And we're having a good time. And then so I poke him in the eyes. I get poked in the eyes too. I feed around. I see that he is down on the mat now. And I'm just like, I froze up completely. I'm like, this is, what, what the hell am I supposed to do now? I'm supposed to be a double down and I'm I'm stuck here. And I'm just like. I didn't know what to do. I went and tagged my partner. And, uh, um, oh, yeah. And I remember what really, what really screwed it up is I was supposed to be a face that match. The crowd did not buy it. I, I come out, cut a promo. I go, hey, everybody, I'm, I'm so sorry that I've been such a bad guy. And everyone's like, boo, boo. And I'm like, I'm like, it's, yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. I'm so, I'm so, and it's, nobody was buying it. And like, um, the guy, uh, one of the guys from out of town, um, he was like, he was like, don't worry, I'll go cut a promo. I'll go cut a promo. Okay. I will get them against me. It'll be fine. He goes out there, you know, he does his best. It was a fine promo. Um, I remember somebody in the crowd yells, we don't care. We hate Buck Bomber. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh. <sighs> So I try to walk out. I had my new gear on. I'm like, let's go, let's go. And then just, they're all booing me. And I'm just like, this is this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. <laughs> so we finally get to the end. I come in with a weapon. Um, I hear somebody in the crowd go, Bitch gonna hit him like a b-. and I'm just like So I go all out. I'm just like, I gotta break this f- thing. So I did. And I was like, Yeah, I'm I'm cool now. And then I throw the kendo stick out of the ring, and I'm just like, "Oh, that's uh, that's not a good idea." <laughs> um, and so it went to a place where nobody was sitting, but it sailed all the way to the back where one old woman was sitting, mm. and it hit her. And mm. you know you've messed up bad when you go to the back, and pops doesn't yell at you, he doesn't scream at you, he doesn't he doesn't say anything, he just looks at you and says. We'll talk next week. And I I was like, you know what? It's done. I'm probably getting kicked out of AAPW. And after that, I don't feel like I should wrestle anymore. And I was at one of the lowest points in my career, I feel like. Um, the other time was when I had a bad match in front of Jay Lethal. And I was just like, 
But there's a part two to that story, so um, we'll get back to that. What about you, Ziggy? You ever had a bad match? <laughs> a couple. I mean, I'm still pretty new to the business. I'm like less than two years, like over a year. It's uh, been a minute, though. I don't. I don't feel like it's been that short, has it? It still kind of feels like I've just joined joined the school a little bit. But, yeah, I've been around, had a lot of matches. I say the most recent bad matches, I say it was one in Mexico. <laughs> All I can say, the one guy, the one guy who spoke English that I go over my spot with, we went over in the back, and he just did not do it at all. I, I just call yep. it two simple things. I can cuss on here, right? Oh, uh, we'll Sim- censor. All right. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I would just call it sidewalk slam, knee drop. That's it. I tried to kick, you know, start off kick, kick, and then send him off the rope. He just stops me. He's like, kick, kick. Like, kicked him some more. Then I tried to take him off, give him the damn sidewalk slam. He's trying to do a head scissors. I'm like, what the f-? And I just dropped him. Just like, you. So I just finished my spot off, let him pin me, and just, like, got out the rain. So, yeah. That's funny because I think I was in that match, but I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were in that match. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you guys uh, um, pulled back the curtain a little bit right before this. You guys said, let's not talk about the Mexico thing. <laughs> well, we're already here. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I it's, gotcha. uh, you know, fuck, I'll just dive into it. I love – Go ahead. This is my first time um, going into Mexico. Well, it was actually – my. I've been there twice now, but – um, haven't been there, you know, in a few months. My first time going was just a few months ago, so it was really cool to travel to another country, especially for wrestling. Even though the shows weren't too great, but um, it, I loved um, walking down there. It kind of felt like a blast in the past because you're walking down and you see pay phones and you see a book, kind of like the older stuff. It's really like shoe shine like stations <laughs> everywhere and uh we got some amazing street food the tacos were great um the people down there were super friendly all the luchadors were great some spoke english all the fans you know like it's it's crazy because the fans down there they they wait to take pictures with you they, they want they wrestling. want to meet you they want to talk to you and i don't speak any spanish but they're there trying to talk to me and i know like you hear the worst things about every place in the world but down there i i loved it and um i saw a lot of couples walking around at night and i was just it was just a lovely town um of course bad things happen everywhere but um i don't think people should be afraid to travel just go out there wherever you want to go and experience it absolutely like my first time going to laredo uh which was by myself like everybody was like oh man you're gonna get pulled over the border and beheaded and i'm all like and I, I, I did go there kind of scared. Like, I, I, I pulled up to the place where we were, ran in, got changed, did my shit. Uh, censor that, please. Um, I got changed back, hopped in my car, left. And then, you know, the next couple times I went there, I was like, you know, this place is fine. It's it's fine. Um, I was always there, like, after everything was closed, though. I was like, ah. You know, late shows going late. Right. Uh, yeah, last time we went, I was very very upset that we did not have time to stop and get tacos. Yeah. But uh, but um, and of course down there, you know, everyone is everyone wrestles differently, and you're in Mexico, so we were in trouble because we didn't we're not on our uh, lucha libre. But that is something I, I do want to really learn and uh, learn the Mexican style because once you, uh, it seems like actually I think the states is the only one that really like works to left to really pull back that curtain you were talking about. Right. But in Mexico, in, in Japan, it seems like everyone else, it's different. They they work the opposite way. By the way, we can we can pull back any curtain because this is it's the buckle already, bomb where it's we already, blow kayfabe wide open. It's already out the door, brother. I'm telling you, we don't work the left down there. And I was trying to work the left, and I was locking up with them wrong. So that will probably qualify in your bad match list. But <laughs> I don't want to bury anyone for that. It's just because it's a clash of styles, and, and there is – Big uh, communication, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Miscommunication, you know, yeah. unable to communicate. and A uh, language barrier? Thank you, that thing. No. Um, but still, um, it's something I still want to pursue. I still want to go down there and perfect that, that style because I think 
anything you take in is only going to help you out. And I would love to wrestle or maybe even get on in the big leagues in Mexico, wherever it will take me. So uh, I think you should take in any style that you can. Nice, nice. Um, in our – what I do believe will become a lost episode, uh, the one we recorded last week, um, do you guys know Sergeant Anderson's going to go work in uh, – Work? Yeah, I know. Like work, wrestle work. Uh, after I uh, kick his butt in uh, um, at the Halloween hardcore show, I think he's going to just have to leave. So, yeah, I know he's been booking flights over there. Uh, it's called, he's, he's not going to be able to wrestle here after me, brother. It's called the Halloween Horror Show. That one. By the power invested in me, I'm changing the name back because I hate when we call it just Halloween Hardcore because it's just like, that's the name of another event with just the words flipped. I have a fantastic idea. Now hear me out. All right. Halloween Havoc. I f- hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, uh... Terrible, horrible, no good, very, very bad ideas aside. How about good matches? What about the highs in professional wrestling? Somebody, somebody's got to have a – somebody's have had to have a good – I'll I'm, go first again. Yeah, okay, because um, my grammar is just dead over here. So this one I think is still my favorite, and it was like – Still, like, I mean, I'm still early in my career, but it was, like, within my first year of wrestling. It was the first Halloween horror – what did you just say? Halloween horror show. It was my first Halloween horror show. I think this is going to be the third year, so two years ago. Is that right? Whatever. My first first Halloween show, I wrestled Jose Valiente. I remember that one. And we had a good month feud um, going back and forth, and we had – we were semi main and we were uh hair my hair versus his career. If he won, he cuts my hair. If I win, he he's he has to hang up the boots. It's just funny because he just came out <laughs> he just came back out of retirement <laughs> at that point. But um he had a good feud. He was the first dude, like I said, it was really early, early in my career, so he was the first one to really push me and try me get me to try new moves I haven't done before. And he was really pulling ideas out and i was being a little brat after class like oh why are you making me do this i want to go home but now i'm like dude he was teaching me valuable things that i now still use in my matches and i think that's where i really gained my aggression from is from him you got to match the aggression of your opponent you got to maybe even be able to excel it to really draw people in anyway it was just a normal match with the stipulation and i can't really tell you much I remember about the match, except I did like a big top rope crossbody to the outside. There was like 200 people packed in there. The part that really is the icing on the cake for me is when I lose, which is funny because I lose. And they pull the chair up. Pops is going to cut my hair. Jose um, grabs my ponytail and snips it off and drops it all over me. And I'm doing my best to cry. And the heat that he got, dude, the tension. One of my favorite emotions of wrestling, it's funny, it's just the hatred. The fans wanted, they wanted him. They wanted to get him. They were screaming at him, yelling at him, throwing things, and he was on the microphone yelling at the crowd while Pops was cutting my hair and I got my big cry face on. That's one of my favorite moments I've had in my career. I've had a few that are probably like close up to that, but just... Feeling the emotion that we trapped everyone else in in that building was was a phenomenal. It was a great feeling. Nice, very nice, very nice. Ziggy, or should I go? Should we stay in the same order? I guess you go first. I'll go again. Just kidding. <laughs> you can go again because I, I I feel like talking about multiple matches. <laughs> um, but I'd say probably my most favorite match is um, uh, same show you were talking about the uh, Halloween Horror Show. Um, it was me and Christopher Black. Um, in a in a no DQ match, um, and we brought out everything. Um, uh, started off, um, <laughs> you know, he's beating up on me because I'm like, ah, I'm I'm not good at this. I'm gonna offer you some cash. Oh, you're not taking it? Okay, we're fighting now. Uh, 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 I'm getting beat up. I'm getting beat up. You know, he takes my belt off me, and I'm like, no. Swack, swack, swack. I'm like, oh, crowd's like, ha this is really funny. Um, oh, he had some great stuff. He he then grabs like a water bottle and just uh 
throws it on my face and then grabs a mop and it's mopping my face and you know we're all having a good time um the thing about mops is make sure that they're safe uh i got cut pretty bad on the side of my face because you know it holds those strings together like a cheese grater um that's hardcore i got cut really bad right by one of my eyes i was like i was like yeah okay we need to, we need to be more because you think oh it's just a mop whatever yeah. uh no there's like there's like a hidden cheese grater um and then you know he's wiping up the water with a towel and then he's you know rolling it up give me a rat tail and everybody's like ah this is the best and i'm like we're doing great we're doing great you know then i'm on the outside and then i go oh pepper spray he's blinded everyone's like this, that's cheating right there and it's like it's not uh it was a really good time and uh we agreed to um not really work our belt smacks after that um which every single hit crowd was just like oh and I was I was getting hella heat. I was like, Pops didn't know we agreed on that, so he was pretty mad until we explained. But um, it went really well. Uh, and then we had a special guest come in at the end. You know, I'm all like, ha ha, I'm winning, and I'm went. Oh, I've been hit. Oh, and that was actually my first time juicing. Which um, funny story about that. Um, you know, I always have extra razor blades if you're going to juice. My first time, I uh, I had two, and I lost the first one literally, like, right as they were ringing the bell. I took my, my shirt off, and it, the first one came off right with my shirt. So I wrestled. The people can't see this. But I was pinching my middle finger and my thumb together, like, making sure I did not lose that second oh, one. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, okay, so when, when, when Chris threw the water on me, um, I, I had them taped to my fingers, um, that kind of undid some of the tape. So I had, um, I had one on my index and one on my middle on both hands. Uh, I lost most of the, I lost three of them. Uh, we were looking, but, um, so I have a big vein in my forehead and like whenever I like exert myself, it's super obvious. So I'm, I, I'm rolled out. I'm like under the ring. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I can do this, like not totally hidden. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go the extra mile and just be even more hidden. And then, so I didn't stab and drag, you know, like, um, that's like, what I did. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just a little poke in the right spot. Anyway, I didn't hit the right spot. So I was like, I was like, I'll just do, I'll just do a couple extra pokes just to be safe. Uh, I do like three pokes. You know, they healed up in like a day, uh, just completely missed the big vein. And I remember after that, um, I'd say that's the only thing I didn't like about the match is that I didn't juice well. Because like when our when our special guest came out, like there were dudes like grabbing their chairs and like smacking them against the ground because they were like, ah! and I was like, nice, nice. I'm glad this I'm glad this little feud that uh, came about because El Rio posted about both of us. Um, is uh, going well. Um, and I was just really happy with how it went and like the crowd reaction. And it was, it was, it was great. It was definitely somewhere in my like top three. It, no, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I just realized it's hilarious. I thought the one, the match you're talking about just now, for some reason, I thought you were talking about that as your worst match. So I got my, my stuff mixed up. <laughs> oh no! Were you talking about your worst match before this? No, never mind. Okay, just, just make it sure. Make it sure. Make you it sure. You understand my points, okay? Um, and I think, um, you know, sometimes when you have a match that you don't feel is great, but like you didn't think it was terrible, but then the crowd acts like it was the best thing they've ever seen. Um, I still have a, a memory of um, uh, cross out how many days it's been since I've mentioned this match. Uh, had a match where um. At the end of it, children climbed in to, like, mourn the other guy. Oh, and- I saw that. I was there. Yeah, yeah, you were. Yeah. It was great because uh, you were getting great heat, and then I think you're maybe still in the ring or maybe you just got out, and then, like, maybe, like, two dozen kids, like, just jumped in the ring, was trying to revive your opponent. It was it was great. <laughs> yeah. And I got hit in the head with a rock. They were throwing rocks at me, oh, too. I was like, wow. I was yeah, no, I was bleeding a little bit, and I was like, what happened? And they're like... Bro, you got hit with a rock like <laughs> mid match, and I was like, "Oh, okay." No, but I, I I think of that one, and I'm just like, "Man, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about." Um, actually, speaking of speaking of kids, uh, like still believing, I had the weirdest thing happen. Um, it was one of Wolf's kids. Um, 
she was all like, she was like, like she got that this is a work, but she was also like, did you really get fired though? I love, I love when kids are like, are like, it's fake, but it's not all fake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you remember that phase where it's just like, man, wrestling's real. It's just the Undertaker isn't a real zombie, okay? But everything else is real. Yeah. Everything is fake except for Steve Austin. That's right. Okay. That's what that's what uh, really drew me in. Before Ziggy has a chance, I'm gonna jump in with my uh, <laughs> with my second favorite match. You gotta get your shit in. Uh, <laughs> so we were talking about him before, uh, Mr. Sergeant Anderson, formerly known as a uh, uh, is that is that disclosed? That's disclosed, right? Yeah, He's I mean, formerly he was, known as American Eagle. He was unmasked so, in front of everybody. That's right. When um, before he unmasked, I think it was around this time. It was Fourth of July last year, I think. I was uh, I was healing it up, and he was the big baby face, and we had a strap match. You you mentioned hitting each other with belts before. That was pretty much what the whole stipulation of our match was. It had a belt like hung up in every corner of the ring, and it was. Really fun. It was not fun getting hit with that belt because I had a bruise on my chest that lasted like a month. But it added a a really cool dynamic because it wasn't just us trying to like wrestle each other down to get the pin. It was me trying to wrestle him down so I can go to the corner and get the belt so I can beat him with it. So um, I feel like that's normally you see like your strap strap matches or like like bull rope matches, but I feel like you don't really see matches where they. <laughs> And for good reason, because it's not fun. But I do like the unique stipulation of us just hog tying each other and whipping each other, and it's it was it was a good time. Yeah, I remember that match ended with um you know American Eagle hog tying a Native American and whipping him, and everybody just going yeah. I, no, I mean- he he hog tied me, and then he went up and dropped the elbow from the top. He he whipped me before. <laughs> ironically enough, he whipped me before he hog tied me. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right, all right. I wasn't quite right. My mistake. Um, it's still like the hog tying moment. I was just like, uh, <laughs> you're putting you're putting the gimmick over. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's pretty American. <laughs> um, yikes. <laughs> um. All right, Ziggy, you got any you got any matches? Oh yeah, there's two that come to mind. The first one I say was my first Halloween hardcore match, and it was with you, Arrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Karen B and Death match. We Man, used... we should have used the gimmicks more, but it was fun. Yeah, it was. Fun. <laughs> I, I wish we had a better way just to make the fruit explode more to make a mess. Right. Now, now the, looking back on it, I wish I went more out with it because we used some of the fruit. But I'm like, man, you should have just suplexed me in that watermelon. You should have yeah, just done that. Yeah, but, but, but you know, it's yeah. it's a learning experience. It was a fun time, great match. It was like my first gimmick match. Whenever ever. that happens again, though, now it's going to be way better. But yeah, that was that was a great one. Yeah, that was a good time. And that moment where you just went on the second Dude, rope with the coconut and got me. Right I on the- <laughs> jumped off the top rope and hit him with the coconut, and that coconut broke you and see, i felt so bad <laughs> you can see the footage of the juice you can actually see the juice flying out. and i was like i just concussed ziggy <laughs> like, in that exact just, moment it happened <laughs> i'm like i just knocked him out with the coconut <laughs> i heard i heard the crack the coconut go <laughs> right when it hit and i was scared i was like that might have been my skull. I asked him, like, you're okay? And he said he was fine. But Yeah, man. I didn't have not one scratch, not a bump or anything. All I don't this, know how. This, this hair, man, head. this hair. Protect me. So uh, the lesson to be learned here is gimmick the shit out of anything you use, <laughs> no matter how safe it seems. Gimmick the shit out of it. Um, but it's weird, though, because I hit him with it and it broke and he was fine. Yeah, <laughs> give it itself. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you hit people. Like, uh, what comes to mind is another another Halloween show. Um, I remember it was it was me managing, um, and my my mentor uh, Buck Buchanan was there, and uh, it was Dark Star against Blue Blade, and it, it was Halloween. We were like, you know, it was before we made a big deal about the Halloween shows. Um, but there were some jack o' lanterns around the ring, and we were like. Yeah, get the jack o' lantern, hit him with the jack o' lantern, because we were like, it's a hollowed out pumpkin. It's going to like smush, you know. It's not gonna. He swings it at at, at blade. Boom! Just it didn't give at all. 
<laughs> and I could see, I could see, like he was like seeing stars or something, and it was just like, oops. <laughs> I'm like, good thing the next spot is me helping him up to like hold him and you know, and <laughs> Nelson. I'm like, cause geez. All right. Uh but Ziggy, go on. I think you have another one you want to oh, talk yeah. about? One more. Um actually the one with uh Miguel uh, Casanova. I say that was one of my favorite matches doing because I say right that time we're forming a match it was starting to click for me. And me and him both came up with something, and it just came out awesome. I just so. want to cut in and put over Casanova, man. It's it's so it's it's unfair that you know some people come in and they get hurt and they're just out. He, I saw the potential in him, man. I I loved his work. Yeah. He made go. My problem is I can't go slow. I don't, everyone tells me to go slow. I can't figure it out. But that man made it his gimmick. Mm. He would go so slow, and I loved it. And he was just so on point. It, I uh, I hope he's doing well, and uh, maybe one day, hopefully, you never know, he might come back. But yeah, yeah you know. shout out to you, bro. I yeah, hope you, I really do hope you come back so we can. I had I had a wonderful match with him. Also, I was I was really happy. I got to I got to work him. Another favorite match of mine. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, nah, he was. I really liked editing his promos because he always just kind of brought it, and I was like, all right. And he was he dealt with criticism well. I was like, you know, my favorite thing to say is. It was okay. Well, let's do it again, but just give me more. And so people go, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm just like, give me more. It's like, it's like, like it, like it, like in the cold open. I, I like to say pretty open ended things because it's like, um, what I have learned, uh, working with, you know, them fancy TV people is a good director doesn't tell you what to do. He just kind of lets you know to do your own thing um, and just little tweaks if it's not right. Um, I botched whatever that guy told me. Um, I remember the first part. A good director's not there to tell you what to do. Um, So, uh, looks like it's about that time for ABP Always Be Plugin. Michael, what are your socials and what you got coming up? Official arrow uh, underscore official arrow on uh, on Instagram, and I will be oh, man, I, Ziggy. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, I'm I'm on my my Instagram is Ziggy Buffalo Soldier all in one. What do I got coming up? I do not know. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be here in AAPW again, defending my tag team championships with King Cortez, whoever. This is the unfortunate tag team that has to go against us. And you will see Official Arrow, again, underscore Official Arrow, back at AAPW October 1st. Catch me in San Antonio tomorrow. And that is all I have right now, actually. Oh, yeah. I'm tagging <laughs> along with them, too, in San Antonio. So. On, a, on a Wednesday night. Tuesday. Tomorrow's Tuesday, my bud. Oh, uh, yeah. I am. What are you doing Thursday? Nothing. Do you want to go see MVP at a uh, Kick My Coffee? Buy me a ticket. <laughs> it's, it's probably it's gonna, it's gonna be like twenty bucks. I'm down. All right, yeah, cool. I tagged you in it. I want to see MVP, and then we're gonna bum rush him after and say, "Hey, we're wrestlers." Yeah, brother. You know, I'm hoping because uh, one of the guys opening for him is a is a friend of mine, Mega Ran, who is kind of in the. He is the he is he is somehow super in the wrestling community without ever wrestling. Um, I don't know if you guys knew. Uh, he's known as Mega Ran or Random. Um, do you remember when the Usos and the New Day had a rap battle? Sort of. So he wrote that, and he was standing behind them while it was going on. Oh wow! Um, he hangs around with uh, Xavier Woods a lot, and. Uh, he he did something at uh he beefed with um with um one of the Dudley boys at uh at Ring of Honor one time. <laughs> Who doesn't beef with the Dudley boys? And man, the thing about it is it worked me. It super worked me. I was like I was like, dude, what the hell? Why would they treat you like that? And he's like, Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it's got me so heated. Uh, and I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, and like, um, uh, I forget what else he did, but there's something else. Um, somebody was using a song of his as their, like, somebody big. Um, 
I'm blanking on it. It's killing me. Um, anyway. Shout out to that guy. Yeah, shout out to that guy. <laughs> Woo! Uh, and I guess it is time for the buckle bomb to blow up. I don't know how to end episodes anymore. I like turtles.